Hi, my name is Judith. I'm going to talk to you today about charcoal drawing. Here are our supplies. This is spray fix. When you finish your drawing, you'll want to spray it with a fixative so that the charcoal adheres to the paper and doesn't fluff off. That way it can be moved around without being disturbed. We have two kinds of erasers. We have the chamois cloth and the gray kneaded rubber eraser. We use a blending stick. The blending stick is to smooth and soften the charcoal instead of using your fingers. We have two types of charcoal. One is the soft charcoal and the other is the hard charcoal. You can always tell them apart because the soft charcoal is thicker in diameter and the hard charcoal is, tends to be thinner. Okay, so I've put a gray tone on the paper so that we're not working on the white. With charcoal, we work from the middle value and then go uh, to the lights and to the darks. So today, I'm going to demonstrate the uses of charcoal using two bottles and a pair. So when we lay out our composition, we have to think how it's going to fit on the paper. So if you start too low, pretty soon you're falling off. So we want to center it up high so we have plenty of room to work. Probably you know about outlining. So to get this on the paper, if you were to outline it, you would probably start here and go up and go around and go back down and then you run into the other um, bottle and come down here, you run into the pair and you follow it around and around and around. So here we have an outline drawing of the two bottles in the pair. But if you didn't have the setup, how would you know what it was? It could be anything. So when you draw, we need to have overlapping and inside information. So let's break our composition down into basic shapes. What are basic shapes? Basic shapes are things like squares and rectangles, triangles, circles, half circles, and I think this crescent moon shape seems to show up a lot. So using these basic shapes, if I were to draw this, I would start with the bottle in the back, and the neck on the bottle in the back is some sort of rectangle shape. So I make a simple rectangle. Now I notice as it comes down, it seems to flare out a bit on both sides. So this is like a half circle here. And then the body is wider than the neck. So I bring this down until it looks approximately the right length, and then instead of making it straight across, I give it a bit of a curve here to show that it's round. And when you start curving these straight lines, automatically right away it becomes three-dimensional. So the bottle, the second bottle, how do I know this um, body is like a giant half circle shape, so how do I know how big to make it? So I can hold my charcoal up if this is the top of my half circle shape, I can make um, look across, and that falls where in relationship to the bottle in the back. Uh, I'd say about the center-ish, so that's about this high. So as the bottle comes, it crosses in front of the back bottle. By how much? Does it cross like halfway, a little bit, or a lot? So from my angle, I would say about halfway. And then I notice as the bottle comes around, it goes past the bottom of the back bottle, and it actually comes lower than the bottle in the back. So this is gonna come around, 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 and a bit lower. So the bottom has to be down here. So I notice that this comes out about to the center, and then it starts going back in again. So the widest part of the curve is about in the middle. So I start here, and I look very carefully at what I'm keep my eye on the bottle and let my hand follow. And then on this side, to make it symmetrical, we have to make the same sort of thing over here. Now I look at the neck and I look at the neck, I look at the neck and compare them. Very similar, very similar. Very similar in width and very similar in height. So I'm going to make another rectangle that's approximately the same size. So now the pair, same thing. I can hold my charcoal up how tall is a pair compared to the bottle in the middle? It's about halfway. 
So if this is half, it has to be this tall. I can also compare up and down. So the edge of this pair falls way in relationship to the bottle in the back, somewhere next to this neck in this area. And then we know it has to be lower because it's in front. So the back side of this pair is um, like a circle. It's a circle back here. And as it comes this way, it's kind of an odd shaped triangle or kind of a square shape. It sort of fits right in here. And then we have the stem, which would fit in this part. So now I have everything kind of laid out so that um, we have proportion. So the bottle in the back is tall and thin, the center bottle is fatter and shorter, and the pear has kind of a pear shape. Now we kind of symbolize the pear by making it a circle with kind of an odd triangle or square shape. But that doesn't really look like this pear here. So whenever you have something that has a lot of curves to it, try and draw it all with a straight line. That way when you go to smooth it out, it'll turn into the perfect curve. So I play a little game where I try and draw this with straight lines. So I look at it, and this is where I go like an outline contour. How far can I go before the line seems to change and go in another direction? Sometimes it's long, sometimes it's short, and I go around and I follow it, and I try to draw it all with straight lines. So it kind of curves this way and this way, fast, long, short, round and around then I have this pair is here. Okay. So when you make a mistake, you may take your paper towel, erase, and the charcoal just goes into the background. So once we have our composition laid down where we can work with it, we go on to step two which is values, shadows, and lights. So what is the darkest thing in your composition? It's the bottle in the center. So I start filling this in, dark. I don't worry about being too neat and perfect, I just want to get it nice and dark filled in the center. Now we very carefully put all our lines in. But now we want to begin to lose the lines to create a great three-dimensional effect. So with my blender now, instead of my fingers, I'm using the blender and I'm smoothing out the charcoal and getting it nice and smooth like glass, hiding all my lines, getting it really, smoothing it and making sure it's nice and Now the second bottle is more see-through, it's not as dark as the first bottle. So when I start applying my charcoal, I don't press as hard and I leave gaps. I leave some gaps so that when I take my blender and I start smoothing this together, it comes out medium. So now the background is light gray, the first bottle is medium gray, and this is dark gray. Now this is, I can see through this a little bit. So to put in that transparency, I can see a little bit where this intersection is. And where this intersection is, it looks a bit darker to me in this part. Now I'm getting into black. Once you start putting black on your charcoal drawing, it starts filling up the paper. And when I use my blender to smooth that, it starts coming off. So the paper will only hold so much charcoal. So when you get to your black, the black has to go on strong, and then you can't touch it or it's going to come off. So I see a strong edge here, then it kind of merges with the bottle into all this darkness. It's kind of darker around here. And then I use my charcoal just as if it were a blender. 